Hi friends, welcome back to my channel about Flutter. In today's video, I will be sharing some information about persisting data in local database for Flutter for Android and iOS only. Uh, this persistence uh, will be achieved using SQF Lite Fl Flutter plugin. A while ago, I wrote an article about persisting the data across the platforms on Android, iOS, and web using more plugin. In this article, uh, I showed you how to persist themes using database. Actually, you really don't need to persist theme in database, but this was just an example to show the cross-platform implementation. And uh, I used the implementation of uh, persisting the cro across the cross platform using more plugin using this library by Rodi Davis and he wrote a uh, fantastic uh, uh, implementation here how we can uh, use for different implementations so if we want web for web internally use database uh, uh, the web database however in the native implementations like ios and android it uses the sqlite it's right here uh, and for ios and linux it uses vm database and so on uh, so in today's article i will show you this implementation how uh, SQLite can be used to uh, persist data in for iOS and Android. It depends on your use case, what you want to achieve. If you are not uh, not planning to write your code for the cross-platform, like for web or for Mac or Windows as such, or you want only to write for iOS and Android, then probably it's a better choice to use SQLite directly because more. Uh, a more plugin uses internally SQL um, SQLite database, uh, is, uh, and the plugin is uh, called SQF Lite plugin. All right. So in today's uh, this code recipe, uh, I will have this uh, very simple implementation of this e-commerce uh, type of app, uh, app where you have some products that you want to save in the database and you want to say uh, show in the UI. So in this uh, example, I have only these two uh, products that I have and one image and some information I'm showing about each product and I have only two products here. So in this code recipe, I will be doing three things. One is some quick interface. However, this uh, article is not uh, targeted or the UI, creating a particular UI, but we'll quickly see how this UI was is being built. And second, uh, database. So uh, the database is in this file, ecom underscore db dot dot, and source code links are provided. And the third thing, uh, I will be adding these two products into the database at when the app will be starting at the app start time. Uh, Okay, so now as you see, uh, this is a list view, is a typical list view. And we have these two products right here. And uh, there are uh, two ways to access this recipe. One is the Flutter cookbook that it, where you have, um, you can find other um, application as well, sample application as well. It's been added here. And or another way is you can directly go to the code link that's provided at the bottom of this article and you can enable the uh, the top most two lines in the run app line to just run that file. Okay, so for pubspec.yaml dependency, that's the only one dependency is used, uh, SQF Lite. And I'm using 1.3.0 for this. However, SQF Lite plugin uses the dependency path plugin. Uh, so wh what is it for? This actually uh, gives a nice um, file separators depending on what platform it's running. So that's for the path uh, uh, plugin is used. Uh, so in my uh, configuration, I already had path plugin, so I'm not showing it here, but that is something you may want to consider. Okay, so first thing is user interface. Um, I will give you a quick 
uh, overview of how this interface is being built and I will not go into the code details of this UI interface. If you are uh, will, uh, if you are interested in checking out the implementation, you can check in the source code. So uh, first thing, it's a list view, and this list view has two item here, and each this item, the card view here, one item is made up of two positioned widgets. One is oh, vertical in the image, and one is horizontal, and uh, I have put these two position widget in a stack and this is a one column and then on uh, on top of that I have a stack and these two position widgets and in the the uh, uh, product information is shown using a column widget and it has text for the title text for the description and text for the price and the as you see position block method is actually returning this whole block which has these two uh, position widgets inside so uh, that's pretty much uh, that's a very simple ui uh, and agregulus to use the one which is building this and um, of course it's a state a stateful widget because we want to change the state as the data loads and data is loaded at the startup inside the init state method so here this is where i call init db to insert the demo data However, it, this may not be the best way to do every time. Uh, there are different implementation that it could be useful. Um, and now uh, the database, uh, here is the, how the database, like how we are getting the, um, uh, the queries from database. So we are running the queries and we are getting um, the data in an asynchronous manner. Uh, so for that, uh, we may want to use something called future builder widget. So what this uh, widget does, it has something called future attribute and where this is where the all products, it's returning the future like data in an asynchronous manner so that it doesn't block the UI. And it takes the builder and inside builder, it's a context and snapshot. So when there's no data, it will show the circular progress indicator. Otherwise, it will have a builder, list view builder, and in a vertical direction, and it will build a column and put position block uh, in that. The position block, as we saw, had two, uh, again, two positioned uh, block, uh, uh, widgets to show the image and the product information, and a divider, of course. All right, so now the main thing, the uh, local database. So it's in the ecom db.dart. And what it does is, first thing it in, uh, creates the database asynchronously, as you can see, see async keyword here. So what it does, it open the database, join database, like this takes the database path, the file path on this on your system, and um, have the gives the database name, the file name, and the join uh, this uh, method is coming from the path library, the path plugin that we talked about. And here it's a simple, is creating a table and where it has key, text, and text for description, title, and image text, a URL that I have assets to asset locally stored, and the real for the price. And of course, a version so that it can um, keep track of upgrading and downgrades in the database. And so in here, I have this product class, which contains my all the information about my uh, the object, the product object, um, about the uh, product. So it's ID, title, description, image, and price, as simple as like I have my database. And here you need uh, one method to map. So we use this to map method to store the data, to save the data in the database. So it's here, it's a more like a map kind of implementation as you see, for the all the attributes, all the fields, all the members of the class. And now inserting the product. So as you see in here, so first as it returns future, to not, uh, so that your insert qu uh, operation doesn't block the uh, thread. Uh, it doesn't block the UI and now so future returns async right here and if we take the database the event database is ready that's why we use await and if you are you is using await you have to use async uh, you have to use an async block and now for insert 
um, there is something called conflict algorithm so it's like if you're inserting something and you have a conflict then what needs to be done so in my case i just want to replace it i do not want to um, keep multiple entries for the same item so in that uh, that's why i'm using the conflict algorithm as replace and here you see the top table product is my product uh, the table name and um, which is defined earlier in the real code um, in the actual code not here and the product dot map is the one which is actually this is the entity here this is whole information is being stored in the database <coughs> now querying the all products so uh, as we saw the all products run a select query very typical select query sorry this highlighting is not so good okay so the all products is also um, doing the async operation and returning the future list of products um, and this is what we are mm, um, accessing in the future builder widget and iterating over these lists and what it's doing is it's doing a query of the table on the table products and getting all the items and the once I get the item I'm generating a list using this uh, list.generate method and iterating over the map and length and creating the product objects to be returned to my uh, interface. Now, so as you see, this is what is happening right here and my future, right here, my future builder is getting these, all the information about a list of product objects and which is rendering it inside the UI. Right, so that's pretty much and uh, here it's uh, a little sample code for the updating a product and a deleting however uh, we are not using these two operations in this code recipe but uh, just to sake of com uh, completeness I put it right here so if if you're planning to update a product then of course a table uh, table name and the same map and the where ID and I don't and try to use the where are args because you don't uh, to avoid the SQL injections and this very similar query goes as for delete. It uses the where ID and the where args. So now the init date DB, init DB I'm uh, using it to put two dummy products right here. And my uh, for shoes and dress, I have the images that's in my asset folder in the code repo. Feel free to check them out. And here I'm using await and again this is async as you see since I'm using my await. So what is await is await it, um, it calls a method in, and it wait for it to complete the, uh, this operation. So once it up, um, insert the product one then will it go ahead with the adding the product two. That is the await is for and this all happens without blocking the thread. So this is pretty much uh, for this uh, code recipe and again this is a internal implementation that more package uses uh, to implement uh, the database persistence uh, persisting data in local database using SQLite database and this particular plugin that use uh, that's being used is SQFLite plugin uh, you can read more about here and this is my uh, link to my uh, article and here are the code recipe of uh, the link and this is for flutter cookbook so that's pretty much for this article i hope you liked it and i will see you in the next video thank you